All right, today we're going to cover topic 7.7, .7, which is where we begin working with an initial value. And on these problems, we can now get to a what's called a particular solution to a differential equation, where we don't have to have the plus C anymore. We will now know what the C is, all right? And so let's get into it and um, get rolling. Find the particular solution y equals f of x to the given differential equation with the, here's important words, initial condition f of 0 equals negative 2. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is separate variables. All right? So we've been doing that for a couple days. So in this case, I can just cross multiply, makes it fairly easy, and I have y dy equals x plus 1 dx when I separate my variables. All right? And from this point on, it's, again, still what we've been doing. We're going to work on solving and get to a general solution first. So the next thing we're going to do is integrate both sides. y dy equals the integral of x plus 1 dx. And we know that the antiderivative of the left side would be y squared over 2. And the antiderivative of the right side would be x squared plus x plus c. All right, just working through regular antiderivatives. And this is where, if I wanted to solve this for y, like we've been doing, I could. But at this point, this is where I'm going to give you a big tip. This is where we want to plug in our initial condition. All right, right here. Plug in the initial condition here. So when we plug that in, and by the way, this is x squared over 2, what are we plugging in? I am plugging in this for x and this for y. All right, just like what we learned when we worked with functions all going through high school, the 0 is the x value, the negative 2 is the y value. So I'm going to put a negative 2 in here, and I'm going to put a 0 in there and there. All right, so now I have negative 2 squared over 2 equals 0 squared over 2 plus 0, plus c. Why are we doing this? So I can find out what c is. If I do this, I'm now going to know what c is, and I can have what's called a particular solution. So obviously, the right-hand side is all 0, and I have c. On the right-hand side, I'm going to have 4 over 2, so my c value is 2. Now, I'm not done until I write the particular solution. So what I'm going to do now on the next slide is I'm going to put this C in right here. All right. So we're going to have Y squared over 2 equals X squared over 2 plus x plus 2. Okay. If I'm going to solve this for y, I would multiply everything by 2 next. Okay. 2 times this side, 2 times this side as a quantity, of course. So now I have y squared equals x squared plus 2x plus 4.
and I take the square root of both sides. Now we need to be careful here because when I take the square root of something, we are used to this, I take the positive and the negative of it. So we need to choose one of those. And the way that we choose is we have to go back to our initial condition. Our initial condition is negative. Let's go back to the original problem. Our initial condition was a negative 2. So that tells me that I need to select the negative. Alright, so my answer is y equals the negative square root of x squared plus 2x plus 4. So you must consider that initial condition in that case. All right, let's look at another one. Go to the next problem. Which of the following is the solution to the differential equation dy dx equals x squared over y with an initial condition? Go ahead and start uh, separating the variables. So separating the variables here is another time uh, where I can just cross multiply. So I've got the integral of y dy equals the integral of x squared dx. Do like we always do, integrate both sides, find antiderivatives. I have y squared over 2 equals x cubed over 3 plus c. And this is where we want to put in our initial condition. There's no need to go ahead and solve this for y. As a matter of fact, it makes it harder. Go ahead and put your initial condition in right now. Here's our initial condition. All right. So we put in 3 for x. So I'm going to have 3 cubed, which is 27 over 3 plus c. I'm going to have negative 2 squared, which is 4 over 2. So basically what I have is 2 equals 9 plus c. So c equals negative 7. All right. Now notice this is a multiple choice problem. So we now need to put our c back in. All right. So we need to input our c. And we're going to do that right here so that I have y squared over 2 equals x cubed over 3 minus 7. Everything else is just algebra. All right, so I'd multiply everything by 2. So I have y squared equals 2 thirds x cubed minus 14. I would take the square root of both sides, and once again, we need to decide, are we going to use the positive or the negative? We look at our initial condition, negative, all right, so we need to choose the negative square root. All right, so we want the one that is negative, and that is answer E.
All right, I think overall you will like these problems once you get used to them. Um, let's keep moving. Give another initial condition problem. Find the particular solution of the equation. All right, so we start the same way. We're going to separate variables. So I would multiply both sides by d theta. So I have dy equals 4 y squared cosine of 2 theta d theta. And I'm going to need to divide both sides by 4y squared. So that leaves me with 1 over 4y squared dy equals the cosine of 2 theta d theta. All right, that is a dy. So what I would do to clean this up is I would bring out a one-fourth in front of my integral. And I'd make this one-fourth the integral of y to the negative 2 dy. Over here, we're just going to leave it as is. All right. On the left-hand side, we're going to use the power rule. So I add 1 to my negative 2. So that, that's going to make this y to the negative 1 over negative 1. And that's multiplied by 1 fourth. On the right hand side, I need to do a substitution. I need to let u equal 2 theta. So du is 2 d theta. I need to introduce a 1 half. So on the right side, I've really got, I'll squeeze another little step in here, one-half the integral of the cosine of u du. So that antiderivative will be one-half. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. One-half the sine of 2 theta plus c. And this, again, is the best place to put in your initial condition. Okay, we've got an initial condition up here. So let's put it in now. Uh, the left side, we can clean up the left side. The left side is actually negative 1 over 4y. All right, and um, that equals my one-half sine of 2 theta plus c. And now let's put in the initial condition. So my x value, or my theta value, is pi halves. So 2 times pi halves is pi. So I really have one-half times the sine of pi plus c is equal to negative 1 over 4 times 1, which is just 4. Okay. And what is the sine of pi? Isn't it zero? That makes this nice. So the sine of pi is zero, so that means c is equal to negative one fourth. All right. And once I know what c is, then I can find my particular solution. So I have negative one fourth, no, I'm sorry, negative one over four y equals one half the sine of two theta minus one fourth. That minus one fourth is our c value. Now, if I'm going to solve this for um, y, algebraically, um, I would multiply everything by negative 4. I would do negative 4 times this side, negative 4 times this side. Okay. 
And that's going to leave me with 1 over positive y equals negative 2 sine of 2 theta plus 1. All right. Algebraically, this is pretty easy to finish. If you remember, we're going to multiply both sides by y. All right. y times this side, y times this side as a quantity. All right, so that leaves me with um, 1 equals this mess times y. And I can divide both sides by that mess. So now I have y equals negative 1 over 2 sine 2 theta minus 1. OK, we had to deal with this negative here, up here. All right. Let's keep moving. This is our, um, we've got a couple of things here to clean up. Um, this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to leave this one for you as a, a homework problem, okay? So let's call this one homework, all right? I will tell you that you should get letter E, all right? But I'd like for you to work through that one and do that one in homework tonight, all right? Um, let's do one more here. This one involves a natural log, all right? So that's why I wanted to do this problem. We need to separate our variables again. Okay. So if I cross multiply on both sides, I have x squared dy equals y minus 1 dx. Well, I don't have my variables separated yet. Okay. All I did was cross multiplied. Okay. So we have to have variables separated, which means I need to divide both sides by, um, I need to divide both sides by x squared and divide both sides by y minus 1 to get the variables together. So that leaves me with 1 over y minus 1 dy equals 1 over x squared dx. Okay. So I'm going to integrate 1 over y minus 1 dy, and I'm going to integrate x to the negative 2 dx. Now, the left-hand side, um, I could do a u substitution, but I don't really need to because the derivative of this thing is just going to be 1. All right? So the left-hand side is just the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1. We recognize that. The right side is x to the negative 1 over negative 1. So that turns this into negative 1 over x plus c. Okay, x to the negative 1 over negative 1 is the same thing as that. And like I've told you, you, we don't need to solve this for y before we plug in our initial condition. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. So my y value is 0, so I'm going to have the natural log of the absolute value of 0 minus 1 equals negative 1 over 2 plus c. So the left side is they're asking the natural log of 1 because it's absolute value. So what is the natural log of 1? Well, up here I drew a little sketch of the natural log graph. The natural log of 1 is 0. So what I have now, I will come up here, is 0 equals negative 1 half plus c. So my c value has got to be 1 half. All right. But we're not done. 
because we're supposed to find the particular solution. We've got some algebra to do yet. So we're going to plug in our C value. When I plug in my C value, I have the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals negative 1 over x, and it's going to be plus 1 half. All right. And so now this is a good review of how do I solve this um, with this natural log in here. I'm going to exponentiate both sides. I'm going to do e to the natural log of y minus 1 equals e to this mass over here. And we've dealt with this before in previous topics. All right, so we know what to do here. Um, so <clears throat> what I have is the absolute value of y minus 1 equal to e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. Now, this is a particular solution, so we're not going to do that trick where we break this up into two little pieces and call that one thing a C. We're not going to do that here. All right, we're going to leave this as is. So what you may or may not remember about absolute value is when I solve absolute value equations, I set this thing equal to the positive and the negative of the other side. like that. That's way back from Algebra 1. And the reason is there's two numbers that I can take their absolute value and get the same number. All right, so that's why we do that. So if I add 1 to both sides, I have y equals 1 plus or minus e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. All right. And if we look at our initial condition, my initial condition was that f f of 2 equals 0. And this initial condition says that when I plug in a 2, I want to get a 0, all right? So if I put a 2 in over here, I have e to the negative 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which is e to the 0, which is 1. Well, I want to get a 0 for my initial condition, and so I want this to be 1 minus 1 so that I get a 0. So when I write my particular solution, I need to write it with the minus e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. And we will stop there for today.